we're back up here. It's been about uh, three to four weeks since the last time we were able to get up here. Really overcast, cloudy weather right now. We'll see if we can get these last two panels installed. All right, so for applying the tape, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting the tape in half because this is an inch and a half butyl tape. And if you can kind of see on here, this width of this uh, frame on the panel is the tape is just too wide. It'll start covering up some of the uh, cells. So again, I mentioned it in another video. If you can pick up three quarter inch tape, it's probably better. So since this is inch and a half, uh, and I am cutting it in half uh, You know you're better off just getting the three quarters and this takes a little more time I'll just do a little section here to show you what exactly I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm taking this RB tape You can see it here and I am overlapping the seam And I'm running this down Over that seam and I'm just letting it stick on there like that Again, if this was three quarter inch tape, it'd be super fast. This tape has a, has a paper backer. What I'm doing is basically just coming in and I'm getting, it's pretty well sealed right here, but what I'm doing just to be extra uh, cautious is I'm peeling this tape down till it's touching the glass part of the frame, but it's not um, covering up any of the, the cells. So I'll just take that tape Pinch it down on the sides like this. This thing has been up and sealed for about three to four weeks straight. No leaks at all with this tape, uh, with the butyl tape method. If we take a look down here, down the seam, there's a hump right here. So it helps shed the water, period. But with this sealed like this on the sides, it's just, it's impossible for it to leak at this point. And you can see how sticky this stuff is. It's it's super sticky and it just sticks to this solar glass really easily. This part right here, I'll put another piece under that and then fold this over the top of it uh, as we go down. Now that piece I can reach from this outer edge. So I put one panel up, um, I'll reach from that side over there and finish that line and then the uh, bottom line of this panel. All right, one panel left to go. That's what we're doing. All right, I was relocating the uh, Starlink and I just kind of wanted to take a look you could get actually a pretty good view of the solar carport solar array that we're working on so we've got uh, the panels up now there's 24 panels these two rows are going to be combined and these two rows are going to be combined for two uh, strings uh, the butyl tape is on covering all the joints and it works perfectly we've been through a tropical storm here and not a bit of leaking underneath so working out well as we can see here this is about five o'clock in the afternoon and there's significant shading happening on the panels i have full sunlight from about 8 30 in the morning till about 3 30 in the afternoon the solar array at full power should be producing approximately 5.7 kilowatts that will be charging a 19 kilowatt battery pack in any 24 hour period, this structure wouldn't see more than maybe three to four kilowatt hours of use. So in any given day of full sunlight, it shouldn't take too long to keep these batteries topped off at 100%. It's raining out. You can see it's nighttime and absolutely raining, wet out. And it's raining pretty steadily now, so there is absolutely no leaks from anywhere on the array. So the butyl tape does its job. It's a little time consuming, but it's uh, absolutely waterproof.
kit. All right, I'm wiring up the panels now. Initially, I was going to run strings of six per string, and that was just because I was looking at uh, some potential shading issues. Uh, I just decided to go ahead and run uh, larger strings. I've got four rows of six, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine uh, two rows of six into a single string. So I'm going to have a series string of 12. As a reminder, these are 240 watt panels and the open circuit voltage on it is 37.2. The EG4 inverse can handle up to 500 volts open circuit. It should be around 450 though. If you add up the numbers, I'm getting a peak of 446 volts. Now I know these panels are underperforming slightly because they're used. Uh, here I'm in a tropical climate. If it, there's sun out, it's no less than 70 degrees probably at the at the coolest. So I won't get any spikes in, you know, power production because of uh, the climate here. So I've got positive negatives all the way down and around and then I have my positive and negative terminal for the 12. I'm going to get up there and take a reading off of it. I've got a cloudy condition right now, um, sun coming out intermittently. Sun's kind of kind of out now so let's get a reading on this uh, voltage here and see what we come up with. All right, I've got pretty good sunlight right now. Let me try and catch a reading off of this. I got my positive terminal. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but got my positive terminal in there and my negative. And I'm getting 395, 96, 394 is going down a little bit. The sun's going a little bit behind the shade, but you know, I cannot exceed 500 on a unit and there's just no way that this is going to hit that 500 or 450 actually they say not to run the units over 450 so I don't foresee this ever going that high okay uh, we'll see if we get another peak sun and then we'll take another reading All right this is the current electrical panel setup again this is going to be relocated in the entire um, we're going to rewire the entire uh, cabin here uh, and we're going to relocate the panels again over to the same wall as where the inverters are going to be placed and also the backup generator.